From the WLRN studios at the Miami Herald, I'm Wilson Sayre. Washington, D.C. gets most of the attention, but plenty of government decisions happen closer to home in long public meetings where you, the public, have the right to speak your mind. WLRN's Rowan Morgarity tried to find out just how far that right goes. Just a note to listeners, the school board of Miami-Dade County holds WLRN's broadcast license. WLRN has editorial independence from the school board. Listen to the public hearing portion of a Miami-Dade County school board meeting, and you're likely to hear exchanges like this. Representative Eric Fresson, other politicians such as city councilors. I would prefer that you don't mention names. Uh, Names are not allowed. Superintendent Carvalho called this desk for illegally being... I would appreciate no no names, please, ma'am. Those interruptions tend to come up when someone's complaining, and they can be traced to the board's rules on decorum, which the board attorney reads at the beginning of every public hearing. The intent of these policies is to ensure the orderly progress of the public hearing. Speakers shall not address individual board members by name. In practice, the prohibition on names goes much further to the superintendent, local politicians, district staff, except sometimes it doesn't. I'd like to start off by thanking Dr. Holloway, Dr. Ben Doris Mendigal, Dr. Feldman, Ms. Poole, Ms. Yu, Ms. Salas, Ms. Bodie, Dr. Clay, Ms. Russell. The board might even ask for clarification. We just want to make sure that you guys know that we appreciate you and... and who are we talking about, sir? Dr. 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 Mendigal. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay, certainly, yes. Similar policies on addressing board members by name are in effect around Florida and around the country at the Miami-Dade County Commission and at school districts from Polk County and Palm Beach to the Keys. It's certainly a complaint that we hear at least once a month from somewhere in the country. Frank Lamonti is a lawyer who runs the Student Press Law Center. He says enforcing a provision like this to hush criticism is exactly what the First Amendment aims to prevent. If I can't say this particular superintendent isn't doing their job well, then the public comment period becomes really meaningless. Board Chairwoman Perla Hantman says being criticized is part of the job and that the names policy wasn't the board's idea. The attorney brought it in. He's the one that does the uh, recommends the policy and the board votes on it. There are also rules banning talk of individual grievances and personal attacks. School board attorney Walter Harvey says the rules prevent disruption and defamation, and they've been vetted by two outside lawyers. Harvey gave the example of a parent talking about a teacher at a meeting that ends up on TV or on the radio. And then she has to hear someone defaming her because she tried to exercise discipline in the classroom or trying to make sure that the students are doing whatever and the other side of the story is not being fully presented. To say the reason why we have this rule is to prevent the possibility of defamation, that's a completely inadequate justification. Rick Garnett teaches freedom of speech law at Notre Dame. The way you deal with defamation is you respond to people who engage in defamation. You don't silence people at the front end in order to make sure they don't defend. Freedom of speech is not the same in public meetings as it is on the street. Garnett says federal courts have sent mixed signals about exactly what that means. But the courts do agree enforcement has to be the same whether you're saying good things or bad things. Courts in Illinois and Virginia have struck down rules with very similar language to what's on the books in Miami-Dade. For every one of these lawsuits that's been brought and won under the First Amendment, that's attorney Frank Lamonti with the Student Press Law Center again. Undoubtedly, there are a dozen other districts that haven't been sued that are still enforcing these questionably constitutional policies just because they could get away with it. A challenge in federal court can take years and tens of thousands of dollars, more than most people would put up for an issue like public comment at school board meetings. Here, though, teachers like Caroline Troche have begun to press the issue at meetings. Take the superintendent. We know who he is. We know his name. We can go on the Internet and find his name. Why can we say his name? That may soon change. After WLRN asked about it, the board voted to review its rules on decorum. If you have something to say about it, you can always speak up at the next public meeting. I'm Rowan Moore Garrity in Miami. And this is WLRN Miami Herald News. I'm Wilson Sayre. Thank you, Wilson.